Well, when I started in 1984, I had no idea that um, that, that that was even a possibility that we would move. So, um, so I was just trying to, I had never worked in a church, so I was trying to get things going and just get my feet on the ground. And then all of a sudden they're saying, okay, we just have to add on because we're, we're, we're too big for this. And we were definitely getting too big for the music building and for those robe rooms and, and all of that. And we didn't have a room for bells. We had to move the bells in there every week. And, and we, um, everything had to happen in that one room, which meant scheduling things was interesting. Um, so, and we also didn't have any place to store our music. So things were just kind of all over the place for that. Um, and I think probably moving around, getting into the church, there was just two, one little door that you got up into the choir loft in, and one on, one on each side, but it wasn't an easy kind of thing. So, um, and I think we started getting full, and it was just, the handwriting was on the wall that this was going to be too small for us. Our organist at the time was Gary Marks. He was a wonderful organist, and when it looked like we were going to need to build an organ, he knew who could do it that was local, which was extremely unusual, and that was John Ballard. And John Ballard was really a genius at building uh, things and sounds. And then they also included Dr. David Heller from Trinity to uh, be on that committee. And the three of them got together and thought, what, what could it be? What kind of sound does it need to be in that room? Um, how big does it need to be? What can we get by with at first? So um, the fact that, that those three players were there, I think was a real gift. Building an organ is a huge feat and it really is a super specialty. Um, and it can be very expensive. One problem we had at the old church with the organ was because of the heat in the sanctuary, the organ pipes were um, zinc and they actually started collapsing. They actually started bending over from the heat there. And so we knew we didn't want, we knew that we couldn't have that kind of uh, pipe in this sanctuary, um, but, and we also knew we needed a much bigger, much bigger organ to just fill up the sound. So, so, but also the cost was a problem. So we know that the, many of the pipes were from an organ that was being dismantled in um, Lawrence, at Lawrence University. And that happened to be where uh, David Heller had gone to school and he knew this was happening and he knew that those, many of those pipes would be perfect for this setting here. Um, and then there were other pipes that we bought from other churches, other organs that were being dismantled around the country. There was a real effort to keep the cost down, but also to reuse. Um, so I would say organ builders are very green they really believe in reusing things and um, taking care of, taking great pains. It's also a super particular science to build an organ. So we were very fortunate that we had John Ballard for all those years to, to uh, do that and to build that for us, to keep it going, to dream what else it could be.